Hi, it's me, Vicky Marie. And uh, just something I came across um, on Facebook, which pointed me towards this that I'm going to present to you today, which I had to either not seen at the time or forgotten. I think it's very interesting and I think it does definitely explain why Peter Folding was not called to give evidence at the inquest. So first of all, I just want to thank all my subscribers, everyone who's liked any of my videos, shared any of my videos, watched any of my videos. I want to thank my members. I've got quite a few members now. Thank you so much. It really helps that to support my channel because most of the videos that I put out don't get monetized because YouTube doesn't like true crime. And honest to God, sometimes... Uh, there was a video that I put out about the Fitbit analysis from Mickey and that not only didn't get monetized, but even when I appealed against it, uh, they wouldn't monetize it. And I'm not, I don't even know why, because there's nothing, you know, it's just some Fitbit data um, analysis. It's not, nothing horrible or gory or, you know, anyway. I just don't understand it, but nearly every video I put out certainly doesn't get monetized at first and then I have to appeal against it and quite often, um, more often than not, they do then relent. Uh, but lately it seems like quite often they, they have been refusing. So there you go, that's just the way it is. So what I'm trying to say basically, so the membership really helps to sustain the channel because uh you know you and even when you do get monetized by youtube it's not massive amount of money and don't don't get me wrong i don't do this really to earn money i do it because i enjoy doing it but obviously it takes time uh etc so you know the support that i get is great also it makes me um it keeps me going if you like it sometimes you know and you think uh is anybody out there and you know so any comment people make or like or whatever i know that people are confirms that people are enjoying my content and that makes you want to do it all the more especially with the nicola bully stuff um and thank you for all the emails that oh well, i'm always being sent emails with photos with um things that are useful you know i i literally I mean, I know I say this all the time, but I could literally spend 24 hours a day making videos if I didn't have another job that I had to do, uh, you know, to teach in Spanish, which is like the bread and butter job. Um, there's always a video to make about something, something interesting that I hope you find interesting. And the live streams, etc. So I just want to say thank you to anyone who support my channel in any way. Some of you have bought me coffees. Some of you have sent me super uh, chats, super stickers, super thanks. All those things really, really make a difference to me. So thank you so much. So let's have a look at this. So this was something that came up on a Facebook page. And um, it's, it's something that happened a while ago in February. Peter Folden, when he was looking for Nicola, Let's have a look at what he said. Gosh, no wonder they don't like him. Uh, because, as I say, I had actually forgotten about this or whether I ever knew it in the first place. Uh, there it is. Just make sure you can see it. So this is the sun. Um, it was in other, all other newspapers as well. I uh, picked the sun because um, basically it's the easiest one to share for no other reason than that. You try and share some of the others like the Telegraph, etc. And you have to subscribe to read the full article, etc. So, yeah. Now the headline. Let's see what date it was. So it was the 7th of February this year. And it was updated on the 8th of February. So this is while Nicola obviously was still missing. So a dive expert in the search for Nicola Bully claims there could be a third party involvement in her disappearance. And Peter Folding said if his dive team cannot find the mum of two today, his gut feeling is that there may be other reasons for her vanishing. So at this time she'd vanished. Oh, bless Nicola. 
uh, she'd vanished, God rest her soul, she'd vanished 11 days ago when this article was written. And he was there. There's the old Ben's, good old Ben. It's so different there from when I went. You know, when I went, all the bloody foliage and if you couldn't see any. But you can see very clearly there, I think, how difficult it would be to fall into uh, there, unless you went right down to the bottom. But anyway. Oh, here's Riley. Well, you can't see Riley because uh, I'm on the avatar. But as soon as I start talking now on the video, he gets sore because he wants to get the camera. Get down. Okay. So the diver's claim centres around Nicola's phone found on a bench after she went missing and still connected to a meeting that he alleges could be a decoy. He told BBC Breakfast today, if Nicola is not in that stretch of river today, my view is that there is a third party involved and this was a decoy placed by the river. It could have been placed as a decoy. There is not enough CCTV to cover particular areas here. The police are working hard in the background to cover everything. It's so unusual we've got no clear information to go on. He exp so this is the key point that I want to explain. He explained he had a similar incident in the search for, mi <laughs> for missing Laura Torn in 2003, where a stiletto was placed to distract investigators. But Nicholas case has left him well and truly baffled. The veteran diver of 25 years told Talk TV. It comes as cops focus search efforts on a track from the fields where Nicola was last seen to Garstang Road in St Michael's on wire. Lancashire Constabulary said on Tuesday they believe this route may hold vital clues and have appealed to drivers and cyclists to come forward with any dash cam footage from the morning of January the 27th when the mum vanished. So... Okay, so it just goes on then to talk about the investigation. I just want to say what he said, really. Now, this was interesting because it says here, it is a non-tidal area of the river. But, you know, silly Sally Riley, she kept going on about how it was tidal. Here it's saying it was a, you know, it's all mystery, isn't it? All controversy, all, you know, every, you read one thing and then it changes. That's what's so irritating about this case. Mr. Falden explained, if Nicola was in the river, she could have even fallen further up. We don't know. I wonder if he knew about the man in black and the screams. And, of course, he said later he didn't know about her specific vulnerabilities and he, didn't, he hadn't been given the full information. The key focus has been around the bench area. We've got to rule out everything here. We can't just go for the bench. We've got to cover the whole stretch of river to make sure there is no untoward circumstances here. Let's see. Now, let's go. So, Mr. Folding previously told Sky News that none of this rings right to me, and it was my belief she's not in the river at all. He's heading a team from Specialist Group International, assisting divers from Lancashire Police. The team from Dorking, Surrey, are forensic experts responsible for assisting cops across the southeast with underwater search operations. So they deployed their specialist equipment that scans the riverbed and they can see everything that is laying down there. They are using a high-spec £55,000 side scan sonar that creates an image of large areas of sea floors and riverbeds. The diver said his team can cover areas extremely quickly, adding that if Nicola is in the water, they will find her in minutes. But, you know, they didn't find her in minutes. 23 days. 23 days. That's interesting, isn't it? It says on Monday night, see, I didn't, I'd forgot, oh, well, I either didn't know or I'd forgotten about this. On Monday night, scores of emergency service vehicles raced to the river wire as residents feared a concerning development in the search for Nicola. A spokesperson for Lancashire Constabulary told the Sun Online, 
We are we were called at 5:51 p.m. today to Shard Road, Hambleton, in relation to the search for Nicola Bully who is missing from St Michael's on Wire. The search of the sand and surrounding area next to near to Shard Bridge by Lancashire Police and the Coast Guard proved negative. And then it says again, cops are confident after reviewing CCTV that Miss Bully did not leave the field near the river via Roman water. But we don't actually know that she entered the field, do we? Anyway, so what I want to look at here is this comment that uh, Peter Folding made that it reminded him of a previous case. Let's see. Because it's just a... A short thing that he says. Let's see, where does he say? He says that it, um, it reminded him of a 2003 case where something had been left as a decoy. Yeah, he explained he had had a similar incident in the search for missing Laura Torn in 2003, where a stiletto was placed to distract investigators. So, I went and had a look at this case. And this is Laura Torn. She was a police, she was a police cadet, funnily enough. Um... And let me just put the, I've got to put the dogs in the bathroom. Sorry. Come on. Yes. You know, they like to wait until I'm doing a video before they start barking. Okay, so this lady, this, she was, well, she was 18, I think. Uh, yeah, 18 years old, bless her. Anyway, this, this woman that was found had believed to have been strangled. The body was discovered shortly before 6pm yesterday, close to a rough farm track near the village of Misson in Nottinghamshire. And while it is yet to be formally identified, Police believe it is Miss Torns. She was last seen in the market square of Oston, Oston Ferry, her hometown in North Lincolnshire, um, after leaving the Crooked Billets pub in the early hours of April the 27th. A post-mortem examination was carried out today by a home office pathologist. Um, let me just make sure you are you actually seeing that. Home office pathologist, blah, 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 blah. So notice it was a home office pathologist because it was suspicious circumstances, homicide. That's why they brought one in for Nicola, but why did they bring one in for Nicola if they didn't think there was any foul play? Anyway, uh, a Humberside police spokesman said the post-mortem concluded that the female died as a result of injuries consistent with strangulation. Now, the key thing that uh, Peter was referring to is that a number of personal items believed to be in Miss Torn's possession when she disappeared have yet to be recovered. The missing items were Sony mobile telephone, a silver watch with a purple face, one large silver hoop earring and a denim handbag with a floral patterned shoulder strap. Now, in that Sun article earlier, they said it was a stiletto that was found because they like to be, a bit, you know, I don't know what it was, uh, but, you know, a stiletto is, is more sort of salacious, isn't it, than what it says here was found, which is a black boot. Last week, a black boot belonging to Miss Torn was discovered on the riverbank. So the thought was that that boot or stiletto, whichever one it was, had been left there as a decoy to make it look as if she'd gone into the river. You know, I personally think the harness in Nicola's case had been left like that as well as a decoy, more even than the phone. The harness was left there near the river. It's like, oh, yeah, look, this is what she was doing, trying to 
to do something with the harness and she fell in absolute rubbish it is the more look you know it's like it's, the, the inquest should have put all these questions to rest but as far as i'm concerned the questions are more now than they were before anyway so um a 31 year old man was arrested on suspicion of miss torn's murder and he was still questioned being questioned by police today after scunthorpe magistrates granted an extension of custody police can now hold the man till six uh, six thirty so that's what happened so the decoy was the boot left on the river uh, uh, riverbed at uh, riverbank now the good thing in this case is that let's see uh, laura's killer was um prosecuted her uh, had a did have a thing for that yeah let's just have a look at this so the perpetrator was a pub landlord a guy who was 32 um she was his estranged girlfriend they'd had a relationship and there's a little bit of an age gap there not massive she's 18 he's 32 she planned to be a police cadet and was well known for riding her pony around the uh, north lincolnshire river port of alston ferry so he twice changed his court plea started off with innocent then he tried to change it to manslaughter but it was rejected by the crown court and mr justice curtis ordering that beckett should serve at least 16 fucking years 16 years for murdering an 18 year old girl come on 16 years is that all her life was worth i mean seriously what is wrong what is wrong anyway at least he got something i suppose you strangled a young what when was this is this was in he, he could be out now i'm going to have a look in a minute he said you strangled a young girl who at least had some emotional feeling for you yeah because what happened was they'd had a relationship and then she wanted to leave him she he wanted to get married she didn't want to get married and that's why he killed her so you strangled a young girl who at least had some emotional feeling for you you have taken the life of a young person without any excuse so i'm going to give you 16 years really anyway um Laura's murder devastated Alston Ferry where she vanished in April last year after passing her driving test and celebrating in a local pub. It's so sad. So sad her poor family. Her body was found after 11 days in a haystack at Miss in Nottinghamshire. So the court heard that Laura had had an on-off of sexual relationship with Beckett who ran the Red Lion pub in Alston Ferry but had tried to distance herself from him this is a uh, breakup violence so common so common this is uh, how i felt about my ex-partner you know if you've seen that video that's exactly how it felt i felt like he was going to do something to me because you just couldn't it just couldn't accept that the relationship was over but anyway becky had become increasingly abusive when she rejected his advances yvonne cohen prosecuted prosecuting said that beckett had finally set fire to the red lion and then phoned laura in the middle of the night claiming he was trapped behind the bar trying to get her to be with him oh on the night she died some weeks later he had again tried to win her back at the same time plying her with drink he prob probably drugged her you know nobody except him knows exactly what happened that night do they so let's have a look is he at please don't tell me he's out now but he's done his 16 years so uh, oh. what but it's saying here that he won his court appeal so uh, 
got this on there here. Yeah. So he was told that he would have to serve at least 16 years, but an appeal court shut, uh, cut that short to 14 years. Appeal judges said more credit should have been given for his guilty plea. Well, he only pled guilty when he knew he wasn't going to get away with it. Apparently, he confessed to a friend and the body was found a few days later. Lord Justice Rowe said in the days leading up to the murder, Beckett had been upset. His application to take over the pub full-time had been rejected. He then set fire to the bar area before ringing Miss Tony's on-off girlfriend. Uh, he claimed in the call he was trapped behind the bar and later told officers who found him unconscious in the pub that he had been drunk. The following day he rode round with Miss Torn when he, she refused to corroborate his story. He then persuaded her to come to the pub and strangled her. That's what my ex-partner used to do. He was always trying to get me in the house, always. And I would not go in. Thank God, thank God. Anyway, another reason for reducing the tariff on Beckett, who also got a five-year concurrent service for arson, was that too much weight had been placed on the age gap between the pair. God, did they really think that 18 years was too much? For the murder of an 18 year old girl. Please. How have her family coped with this? I, I, I honestly do not know how families cope with this kind of thing. So is he out now? He must be out by now. Or was it, you know, you think, did he just? <sighs> I can't see anything about him being released, but I presume he is released. Yeah, I presume he has been released. So, you know, 14 years in uh, 2003 so he, he's probably been out quite a long time so what do you think of that anyway so i started off to oh god I've, I've got myself a little bit upset and angry now so that man who murdered that 18 year old girl and tried to make it look as if she'd gone into the river by leaving her boot or a stiletto or whatever as a decoy on the riverbank and hid her body in a haystack so her parents didn't know what had happened to her for a long time. He is out now. He could be going out with your daughter. He could be going out with you. I, you know, you do you know, do, would people even know who he was? Has he been given a new identity? I just can't believe it. So Laura, her life was taken away from her when she just passed the driving test. She was just about to embark on a career. Her life was just beginning. And he's now gets a chance that he'd already had a bit of a life at 32 when he went in and that into prison. And now he's got a chance for another life. He's probably married, got children. And that, that poor girl and her poor parents, her family, Everybody's got to live with the fact of knowing that he is free. I don't know how to do it. But anyway, the point of making this video originally, it just shows you how one thing leads to another. The point of making this video originally, of course, is that Peter Folding compared this case in 2003 with the decoy left on the riverbank with the case of Nicola Bully and he said about the phone being a decoy and I believe the phone is a decoy but I also believe the harness was a decoy um, and he compared it to that and he said if we don't on that in that um, article we've just read through together he said if we don't find Nicola today she's definitely not in the river there you go so who do you believe? Do you believe Peter Folding 
or do you think he's a so-called expert as was said at the um the family statement after nicola's body was found the anger that came out then those so-called experts so who do we believe you know could he have missed the body with his super sonar equipment and no not not only that let's not forget that the police the coast guard the fire service waders cadaver dogs everybody had searched that river apparently according to the sun there is non-tidal although her the police have been saying all along that it's tidal and then peter said that even if it is tidal what happens is it's an ebb and a flow so if nicola she wouldn't have got washed out like you know because at one point they were thinking that she'd been washed out a bit to morgan bay or whatever uh, and he said that that wouldn't have happened it would be what well, you know that she would her body would move so far and then move back as the tides moved uh, but nobody found her nobody saw her floating you know she only floated at night as she made all that distance uh from the bench to where she was eventually found she only traveled at night because nobody saw her in the day even though there's lots of people walk their dogs along there it was 23 days before anyone actually saw the body floating so funny that isn't it um you know the more you can the more you look into this the more you realize there's so much more to it and i, I just hope and pray uh, if you remember and you if we watched the uh we did the tarot card uh, members only live stream and it did come out that there are more things to come out i hope so i pray every day that whatever happened to nicola uh wasn't accidental death in my eyes so i'm not saying that it was paul who did it i don't know who did it or or didn't do it or what was done but something happened okay so thanks for being with me again uh remember to always live and love very carefully do you know it makes you think you should get criminal charges background check done when you uh meet someone because you could meet this guy so he was 32 then in um, 2003 around about 2003 with the trial and so now he will be so we're 20 years on so he'll be 52 so yeah maybe you should do that well uh, that background check on anybody you meet if, if whatever age they are okay so remember to always live in love very carefully very wisely i will see you very soon in the next video and until then may your god go with you thank you bye